Hello everyone. Today we're looking at Ethernauts level 5, which is token. And in this challenge, we have to hack the basic token contract below. So we start off with 20 tokens and we beat the level if we somehow manage to get our hands on any additional tokens, preferably a very large amount of them. All right, so we have this simple token contract. It has a balances mapping for everybody. It has a total supply uh, during the constructor. The total supply and the initial supply is set to be owned by the message.sender. Then we have a balance off function to check the balance of any given address and a transfer function to move tokens around. So let's start off by getting a new instance and we will see what is happening in the code after that. We'll wait for this transaction to be mined. Awesome. So the transaction has now been mined. We have our instance. So let's take a look at what is happening here. So the view function is fairly straightforward, just returns the balance of the given address. And in the constructor, Ethernaut gives it an initial supply, which is set to be owned by balances message dot sender. Okay, so let's take a look at the transfer function because this is the only place where the balances mapping is changing and possibly the only way we can somehow get more tokens if we won't need to. So the transfer function, it takes in a couple of arguments, a recipient address and a value, the number of tokens you want to transfer. And on the surface, it looks pretty good. It seems like, okay, we require that your balance minus the amount you're trying to send must be greater than or equal to zero. So the intention is that you cannot send more tokens than you actually have. And if that succeeds, then we decrease the amount of tokens you want to transfer from your balance and add it to the recipient's balance, right? On the surface, it looks pretty good, but the thing to note over here is we're using uints, unsigned integers, and addition and subtraction over here can cause an underflow or an overflow. So what I mean by that is Let's head on over to the whiteboard and see what happens. So we have a uint 256 and a uint 256 can hold values anywhere from zero to two to the power 256 minus one. So this is the lower limit and this is the upper limit. Okay, let's say these numbers are represented as boxes, right? So we have a bunch of boxes and each of them represents a number that is possible for UN256 to contain. And it essentially goes like, you know, this is zero, this is one, two, three, all the way up to um, two to the power 256 minus one, right? Two to the power 256 minus one. This looks like a three. Okay, so these are all the possible values that a UN256 can contain. Now, what happens is if you exceed this upper limit, if you like go beyond this, or if you exceed the lower limit, you try to go below it, right? What happens is since this data type cannot deal with those numbers, like it cannot possibly store the value negative one, and it cannot possibly store the value of any number greater than this upper limit, what happens is it, it circles back. So if we go below zero, instead of going to negative numbers, it will start circling back. And if we go above the upper limit, instead of moving on to a larger number, it will circle back from zero. And essentially what this does is, you know, we are starting off our initial balance is 20 tokens and it wants that, okay, you cannot send more than 20 tokens and it's gonna be deducted from the your balance and it's gonna be added to the recipient's balance. So on the surface, looks pretty good. But what happens if I, if I try to actually, let's say do 20 minus 1000, okay? So the normal sort of mathematical logical answer to this is a negative 980, but it cannot deal with negative 980. UN256 cannot hold the value negative 980. So instead, 
what this does is it causes an underflow, which means it starts back, it goes up until zero, right? And then it starts back from the top. So we end up with some really large number close to two to the power 256 minus one minus 980. And this number is definitely greater than zero, um, right? It's not a negative number, it's definitely greater than zero. And we can exploit this underflow bug in this case to get a lot of tokens. So if we try to transfer more tokens than we actually have, the require statement will pass because it will cause an underflow and end up with a really large positive number. And then again, it will try to subtract that from our current balance, and this will again cause an underflow and our balance will be set to a really large number, okay? So let's see what we need to do. So we'll do await contract.transfer, and it doesn't matter what address we transfer it to. Um, let me see actually if they have the null address as a helper here or something. Um, they don't. Okay. I'll just do await contract dot transfer to the Ethereum null address, ETH null address, which is just 0x0000, and pass it to that. And we'll give it, we'll attempt to transfer a thousand tokens over. Okay. So it says, oh, I made a spelling mistake. I added an extra C. All right, so it's gonna prompt me to do a transaction. I'll click confirm and wait for this to be mined. Awesome, so the transaction has now been mined and let's see what our balance is now. So if we do contract.balance of player, it no longer returns us 10, instead it returns us this huge number it is definitely significantly greater than 20. Um, let me try to do it from way and wait for the balance of player. And yeah, it's just a really large number at this point. Um, so if I try to submit the instance now, hit confirm. And there we go. So we have passed this level. And what you can see is, you know, this underflow and overflow bug used to be pretty common in Solidity. And typically the way you would check for it is you would do if conditions around it. So you're making sure, for example, if A plus C is greater than A, then only we do A equals A plus C. And the reason you need to do this is because if there was an overflow when adding A plus C, it would rotate back, right? It would rotate back and start again from zero and end up smaller than A. So if A plus C is actually greater than A, it means an overflow did not occur and only then do we actually do the addition. Um, an easier alternative is to use Open Zeppelin's safe math library that would automatically check for overflows and underflows. So you could do like, instead of A equals A plus C, you do A equals A dot add C. However, one thing to note is this contract is using Solidity 0.6. In newer versions of Solidity, starting from 0.8 point something, underflows and overflows are automatically checked uh, by, the, by Solidity and the EVM itself. So you no longer actually need to use safe math because if there is an underflow or overflow, the transaction just fails now. Um, so if you're using newer versions of Solidity, you don't really need to worry about this. However, there's a ton of contracts on mainnet which were deployed before the latest Solidity version came out, um, which either do use safe math or have a potential underflow overflow bug present in them. Awesome, so that's it for now. Hope you learned something and have a good one. I'll see you in the next level, which is going to be delegation. Cheers.